Hello, Kakahiaka. Mahalo, Nui, for joining this wonderful virtual college presentation. As Gus said, I am Rosie Vieira, the program coordinator of the dental hygiene program. And Brandy just walked in. She is a, he, she is a current student. Go ahead, Brandy. So what we do as dental hygienists is we educate our patients on oral hygiene. We do oral cancer exams, which take a look on the outer surface, so at someone's face, even their head and neck. In Hawaii, we have a lot of sun here, so it's very important. Then we go inside the mouth and we see if there's any discoloration, things like that. We also take x-rays, we scale on polished teeth, and we also can do sealants, local anesthesia, which is numbing, and fluoride treatment. So the job market as a dental hygienist, it is in high demand, especially right now due to COVID and everything. The salary is paid, it pays very well and the benefits vary. So there's a lot of work settings that you can perform. So there's, you can be in a private dental office, you can work in clinics, public health settings, or even the hospitals and nursing homes, which is really exciting because you can pick what area you like the best. And also, you can be an educator. Yeah, you can. Yay! Bachelor's. Um, the skills a dental hygienist needs to be successful is you have to have manual dexterity and coordination. So your fingers, you work with them a lot. So you need to be able to have the strength and the proper mechanics. You have to be able to communicate. So you have to have written and verbal skills. You have to convey to your patient what's going on, what would be best for them, and if for some reason they don't want that kind of treatment, like another route we could do. You have to be a team player, it's not just you in the office, and you have to have the ability to respond to emergencies. The number one emergency in a dental office is syncope, which is fainting or passing out. Also, you have to be sensitive to patients of all backgrounds. So the prerequisites for the dental hygiene program, if one was trying to get into this program, you would have to have human anatomy, and physiology one and two. You have to have microbiology and the lab, English 100 and math 100 or also statistics. So it's 100, 103 or 115 you could have. And then I believe on the next page, we go in a little more. So you have to have biochemistry, which was one of my favorite classes that I took. You have to have food science and human nutrition pharmacology, general pharmacology. When you get into the program, they actually go into more depth. You have to have psychology 100, which is actually new. You have to have sociology 100 and a public speaking or communications class. So the public speaking 151 or communications 130. Okay, so for the general education um, classes, um, they don't necessarily have to be done um, before applying, like your prerequisites have to be done. Mm -hmm. um, although it's highly recommended that you complete almost all of the general education classes before you apply, just because once you get admitted to the dental hygiene program, um, the, the curriculum just in hygiene is very rigorous. So we highly recommend that you finish your general education at the time that you're applying. And then also um, it counts as um, on the student selection criteria, so you get points for taking your general education mm -hmm. courses. So if you want to apply for the dental hygiene program, you complete all prerequisite courses. You can meet with a counselor for advice. Um, applications are available, available online and they are due May 1st and it actually admits one cohort every every other year? Every other year. Yeah. So we take a class of approximately 15 students every other year and between I would say 40 and 50 students apply so like all other dental hygiene programs in the United States it's a very competitive program. So like Ms. Rosie said in order to improve your chances you can take those general um, education requirements it'll help you with the points system of it. You can take science, English, math courses and get good grades. Um, work in de the dental field and gain some experience. I believe on the application, you can get an extra like two points okay. for two years or something like that. And study hard, really important. 
yes, study hard. Um, also, um, we do, if you are on the island of Maui and um, are not working in the dental office, you can always come and volunteer um, and have one-on-one -on -one time with the, the faculty and the students. You can come and volunteer in the dental hygiene clinic and you, you are awarded points for that. I did that one and it was nice because you got to see how the program sort of is run and how it works just before even getting in or accepted and just it's it just helps you out in general too so I would highly recommend that the cost of the dental hygiene program so we have to purchase our own instrument kits dental loops the books manuals college and professional fees class activities and expenses insurance and student membership in the ADHA so class activities so we're actually going to be going to is it San Francisco California well it depends on how this year goes but um we go there for uh dental hygiene boards review. sort of review yeah. yeah and so that's what you do as a class I believe it's usually during spring break sometimes sometimes it depends. It, everything's different now because of COVID-19 yeah. those are things that you have to look into um for extra purchases and things like that what is it like to be a dental hygiene student it is a um it's a full-time you're a full-time student it is a rigorous program you do a lot of community service which i enjoy it's up to you if you want to do it but i would highly recommend it it's nice to get out in the community and what's nice is you meet people and so you recruit your own patients and so while you're out there in the community setting you can also try to promote patients coming in for their free cleanings you write research papers and, case, and do case presentations. So it is an intense program, but it's also extremely fun and rewarding. So don't let that just discourage you, but make sure, I mean, you're prepared to do work. Yeah. Um, as Brandy was saying, um, the students are responsible for recruiting their own patients. Um, However, UH Maui College's dental hygiene program is a no fee for service program. So the program has been very successful in obtaining grants. So whatever services we do at the clinic, all preventive services, there is no fee. We, we do ask for donations and occasionally we get them, uh, but it is a no fee for service clinic. And which is, yeah, the patients really enjoy that aspect of it. Free is free. And then the program math, I believe it's an associate's degree. Um, the first year is three semesters, so you have fall, spring, and summer. And the second year is just two semesters, fall and spring. So the summer is only about six weeks. Six. Yeah, six weeks of summer. So this is what the first year will look like. You take those classes that we have listed there. Radiology was really fun. You get to take radiographs. We have little mannequins that you can use and they have actual teeth in their mouth that the clinic provides and it takes great photos. So that's that. Second semester, you have a little lighter load, but still intense. And then summer session, you take two classes and that's six weeks. So it's a lot of material, but it's sort of condensed, but our teachers are awesome, so we're good. Okay, so if you look at this slide on the first slide where you see the asterisk, mm -hmm. so under the first semester fall, general pharmacology, biochemistry, second semester, um, science of human nutrition, the ones with the asterisks are what we consider the general education courses. So as you can see, what I recommended earlier about taking them prior to being accepted, you have that less of a load to carry um, because it is a really full-time load and very heavy on the science, the oral histology, embryology, um, anatomical science, general, or oh, that's general, general pathology, general oral pathology. So it's very heavy. So whatever you see in the asterisk, we recommend that you take prior to applying. Second semester or second year is the same thing. You're taking about four classes or three classes, but you could take those three with the asterisk if you wanted. But like Miss Rosie said, probably want to get those done before applying. 
And then fourth semester is a lighter load, but that's when you take your dental hygiene boards. So you spend a lot of time studying for those. Yes, the, the curriculum in the second year is purposely left um, as light as possible because uh, uh, dental hygiene candidates are um, there before they become licensed in the state of Hawaii or any place else, they have to successfully pass an eight hour national dental hygiene board exam. That's the written exam. And then afterwards they have to pass a clinical exam, which actually brings in a live patient. Um, this year, because of COVID, um, they're going to typodont or like a mannequin. Um, but the problem right now with that is um, the Hawaii Board of Dental Examiners um, do not accept that kind of exam. So luckily for UH Maui's program, we don't have a graduating class next year. I mean, this year, this summer. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully by next summer, we'll, they'll be able to figure it out. And it will be all like it used to be. Any questions or anything? Yeah, Gus will be, um, Gus will be checking the chat box for questions and then we'll answer anything you want to know about our program. All right, guys, now's the time. Lots of great questions that you guys might have. Feel free to use the chat below to type in your questions. Uh, while we're waiting, Rosie, I got a great question for you. Uh, Do it. What, what is the coolest thing about studying at Maui College? Maui College is always about uh, a student-centered a student -centered approach to, to education. Uh, give us your insight on what, what are some of the special things at Maui College. Um, I, think, I think, you know, I, I've taught dental hygiene on the mainland for a really long time, 25 plus years. And when I came back in 2007, 2008 to, to start the dental hygiene program here at UH Maui, um, one of the things that I feel blessed and privileged to do um, why, why it's so wonderful to work here is it's really an ohana. We really care about each other. Um, um, you know, it's a, it's, we keep the program small on purpose so that we can have really great experiences one-on-one -on -one with each student. Um, Brandy, what about you? What, what is special about studying here at UH Maui? Well, I kind of do the same thing. So I actually went to school at the University of New Mexico as well, and I got my bachelor's there, but I didn't have relationships with the professors. I've been like being able to ask them questions or get that kind of one-on-one -on -one experience here. It's very easy to get in reach or get in touch with them. So if I have any questions, it's simple like that. And then also the students are great. We have, like she said, a cohort of 15. So sort of like a tight-knit little family. And what's nice is, yeah just the overall family. Okay. We have a question that just came in. Uh, can you guys go back to the slide that, uh, that showcases the, the class schedules? And could you go over that slide again? Because like students right are, here? yeah, they're interested in okay. the actual classes that they would be taking from the fall semester to the spring. And if we could cover that again, we had some people come in in the middle of the presentation. So let's, let's go over that uh, class schedule, please. Okay, so in the first year, your first, um, year of dental hygiene in the first semester, the courses that you would take is DH 150, which is oral histology, embryology, 153, which is assessment procedures in dental hygiene, 155 is dental emergencies. Um, Preclinical dental hygiene is where, where you learn dental hygiene skills on mannequins. So you have to reach a level of competency on a mannequin or a typodont before we let you the first per human person you see is your student partner. Mm -hmm. um, and then 158 is anatomical science and general pathology and dental radiology. So the first semester is approximately 16 credits. And then when you successfully do that in the fall, then the second year is dental materials, dental materials lab, oral pathology, applied pharmacology in dentistry, periodontic and clinical dental hygiene one. And this is the clinic that you actually start seeing patients. Um, but dental hygiene in general is based on higher order learning. So if you notice the, 
first and second semesters are where we're building your foundation, where you have to have the sciences to understand um, what, what you'll be doing in the clinic. And then the summer, the summer schedule is local anesthetic DH266 and clinical dental hygiene. Okay, okay so then the, the, it, do we need to go second year, Gus, or just first year? Uh, I think the questions were just trying to, yeah, let, let take us through the second year too, just to make sure that uh, students understand how many classes they'll be taking per semester. Okay. Okay, so then the third, the third semester or the fall semester, when you become a second year student, you do periodontics and advanced clinical techniques. You do a community health class. You have clinic again. And then in the fourth semester, you do you have clinic again, that's clinical dental hygiene, and then law and ethics in dental hygiene. So the first semester, first year is 16 credits. The second semester, first year is 13 credits. Summer is four credits. Second year, first semester is nine. And the fourth semester or, or the last semester before you graduate is six. I hope that answered the questions. Yeah, it looks like it did. Yeah. Uh, so this program, Rosie, this program is really hands-on. Uh, you guys are, are, are really working on mannequins and, 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 and studying the craft, uh, applying what you're learning in books. Have you, um, how's COVID challenged your guys' program and will you guys be moving to some kind of an online uh, presentation or, or class schedule? Um, thanks, Gus. Um, we went online for the lecture classes beginning right before spring break. So in general, we lost eight weeks of, of hands-on, one, um, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. You know, there are some things that you can do on mannequins um, and in the lab, but nothing truly replaces the experience the student has with, with that patient. And because we have, because we are an accredited program, um, we were committed to make up the hours. So actually that's what we're doing in the month of June. Thank goodness we're almost done. <laughs> um, uh, but we had to make up 40, maybe more, between 40 and 60 hours of clinic um, from the eight weeks that we lost. Um, Cause there is nothing that replaces it. There's, you know, you don't, you don't have the one-on-one, -on -one, you can't, you can't give a mannequin injections. You can't, there's so many things that you can't do without a live patient. So there is no replacement. And then on July 6th, we start the six week summer session. So we're really, really busy. And then if COVID comes back, oy, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> we'll deal with it though, because the students will graduate. How about this question? Are there any special scholarships uh, for the dental hygienist program? Um, do you guys have scholarships that can um, help a student defray some of the costs of going to school? So um, there are scholarships. The Maui College, actually, you can, I'm sure a lot of the students have done it, where you can apply to just general scholarships. And, but also there's the community scholarship. There's actually one specifically for dental hygiene students. Correct. You can talk about that, Brandy. You were the recipient of the Kihei oh, Rotary. Yeah, so I actually applied for uh, the Kihei Rotary Scholarship, and they awarded me and one other student in our class it. And it's, I mean, it helps out a lot. So, yeah, you can. Okay, it was $500. So that actually is a big help. And there are tons of scholarships like that that you can apply for. I think in like like some people are nervous or maybe nervous because they were asking about the credits for fall and spring i believe it's not a full-time student load like load so but there are part-time scholarships you can apply for and i believe i was awarded three more for the spring and the fall and that's basically going to cover my tuition so there are tons of options out there for students who want to do it and if like I said, you can still apply for part-time or I know some students are going to take like a medical terminology class possibly in the fall and they'll get the full-time 
well, uh, full time yeah, status. Mm -hmm. So I would say in general, uh, you know, the University of Hawaii system um, has a has a like a general site where people go and fill out, you know, their FAFSA and apply for scholarships. It, in general, not just in dental hygiene, there is a lot of money available to students. Our students just have to be brave enough and diligent and per persistent enough to go and search these out. Now, I will say, mm -hmm. in general, our program, because we're successful in writing grants, our program for two years, once you get into, runs about $22,000. That's really, really cheap. That's really good. Yeah, that's really, really cheap for an associate degree. And then when you go out, you make between $30 and $40 an hour. So um, there is money available. Um, there are lots of opportunities to, to um, get grants. And so just in general, it doesn't even have to be for hygiene. It doesn't even have to be for hygiene. Yeah. You can do it like do a minor for hygiene. Yeah. I guess okay. that's why I said at the Maui site on one of those general scholarship ones and I was awarded it. And I know a couple of girls have crossed up the same scholarship as me. So. Awesome. Definitely buy, apply. Alrighty. Well, guys, if there's not any last questions, uh, we want to thank you guys for coming out to the, this special presentation with Rosie Vieira and the Maui College Dental Hygienist Program. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for coming. Uh, Rosie, you want to say one final thing uh, to everybody just to, just to say aloha and, uh, okay. or anything special you wanted to say? Um. Aloha and mahalo again for joining us on this um, virtual presentation of our program. Um, I wish you well. Um, I wish you would apply. Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be hygiene. Uh, we, we all benefit from a more educated um, community. And so whatever it is that you want to do, just go do it. I challenge you. And if, and if you ever need me for anything, um, I think I believe this is being taped. You can call me. My office number is 808-984-377. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the clinic number. Come get Nine, clean. I know. Come get your kids clean. It's free. 984-3313. Um, uh, and you, you can contact me for any reason. It doesn't have to be hygiene. I've been in education for 30. I'm not even going to say. I'm, I don't want you to know how old I am. Anyway, for a long time, and I... I love students and I love UH Maui and I love the UH systems. Um, Hawaii has a lot to offer. Please come to school. Aloha.